as probably many people, I wondered how the brain may work and then I started to read and um, then it's quite obvious that the function that the brain uh, brings about is in the communication between the nerve cells. And um, as a physicist, what you do is you try to formalize this um, into a model. And the, the nature of the model is so complex that you then require simulation and simulation requires software. What we wanted to do was networks of many thousands at that time neurons and to our knowledge no tool existed to be able to simulate a system like this. This was at the time when Mark Oliver Gewaltig and I started our diploma thesis in the lab of Ad Erzen at the University of Bochum at the time and he brought us in contact with Moshe Abeles who uh, was the uh, inventor of the Synfire chain model. And he already had a simulation software written in Fortran. And he left us his uh, lab notebook where he had um, uh, explained the, uh, the construction of the, of the code and the model itself, unfortunately in Hebrew. The young developers benefited from the experience of Michael Hines, who had created the software Neuron. It is designed to simulate the activity of one or a small number of neurons in great detail. With NEST, the neural simulation tool, large neuronal networks can be created and connected with all parameters that are relevant to simulate their function and dynamics. Simulations are executed in the script language SLY. Users communicate with the software through commands that are based on the programming language Python. The, um the very first version um, was already uh, capable of um, representing different um, neuron models, um, but no plasticity, so synapses were static. And um, this was because um, we were just interested in static networks at the time. But because the software was efficient enough to enable us to carry out many runs of, of such simulations, we were able to uh, map out the full state space of um, the dynamics in this network, which uh, was uh, inaccessible to theory at the time. I guess I must have been one of the first users outside of their own groups and was a bit of a steep learning curve, but it certainly was extremely helpful uh, that I could use a simulator that worked and uh, had just had to make my own little extensions but I could really focus on the science then instead of having to write a complete simulator myself. NEST is, was developed to investigate the dynamics of large networks principally, so networks where you can really um, represent biologically realistic levels of connectivity, so where each neuron can get thousands of connections and makes thousands of connections to other neurons we reduce the complexity of the individual neuron representation and we look at a single compartment or few compartment models where a neuron can be described in terms of a, of a handful of dynamic variables. So a good rule of thumb is that if you personally would be prepared to write down the equations that describe the entire dynamics of the neuron, then this would be a uh, perfectly feasible to, to implement in NEST and it would be a, a good neural model for NEST. NEST has a, from the very beginning, a text-based user interface that means um, you program the experiment that you want to do. Then in 2000 something we adopted the Python interface and that's actually um, the most used interface now and it actually opened NEST to um, a wider user community because our initial language as powerful as it was as hated was it by the users because it was very uh, terse and basically a write only language. Nest is flexible enough as a platform for neurobiological simulations that it can help to answer quite diverse questions about the function of neuronal networks. My scientific project is deep brain stimulation for patients with Parkinson's disease Therefore, we uh, have built a three-dimensional model with a nest and um, this model enables us to um, simulate 
deep brain stimulation in a more realistic way and we are especially interested in how the um, synaptic structure within the stimulation target can be reshaped by stimulation. I'm working on a model of the visual cortex of the macaque monkey where we aim to incorporate all areas that are relevant for visual processing. We uh, try to connect these areas up in a realistic manner using um, anatomical data. What you see here is a so-called uh, bash script which allows the model to be run in parallel on several processors. Uh, it invokes this main uh, file of the simulation that in turn invokes a lot of other uh, files that define functions that, uh, for instance, define the parameters, the single neuron parameters, the parameters of the connections. In NEST there is a set of standard models which the researcher can choose from to build his network architectures from and to do his investigations. And uh, in addition to this, the researcher can create his own modules uh, if the standard set of modules is not enough for his research. We have two interesting uh, developments right now. And one is that um, now the data on the macroscopic anatomy of the brain are rapidly coming in. And the um, other development is that the supercomputers are now powerful enough to represent large parts of the brain. And in order to exploit both of this, we are now extending the topology library of, of NEST um, so that we are able in an efficient way to um, create these, these networks in, in a computer. In order to live up to its full potential, the software must also run efficiently on supercomputers. In this respect, the Forschungszentrum Jülich plays a vital role. On a supercomputer there are much more processors available and these will have to communicate, which means that the software needs to be much more efficient uh, in terms of communication and not just in terms of running, running the simulations on the processors. In 2013, the Simulation Laboratory Neuroscience will be established in Ulich. It will offer neuroscientists advice and support in the use of Ulich's supercomputers. However, the possible uses of NEST are not limited to neuroscience. NEST has been optimized to study uh, systems of networks of pulse-coupled elements, elements which communicate through short pulses in time, and these types of systems can be found everywhere in nature. So I, for example, have been recently working in Norway in a neuroscience lab, uh, together with people working on glaciers, and so we started a common project and we found out that we can study the dynamics of glaciers or the dynamics of calving at the front of glaciers using the same kind of systems or models that we use in neuroscience and also to simulate these systems using NEST. So ultimately we hope that by providing this software to the scientific community that we can increase the accuracy and the reproducibility of scientific papers in our field. We try to spread uh, nest among, so in a general, more general public, um, use it in summer schools as a teaching tool, and that has been uh, both enriching and challenging experience. When we first used Nest at a summer school in 2004, um, it was uh, quite amazing what students all did that we had never thought about before. So in our project, we are interested in a very generic um, idea of networks. And what we are interested in is in uh, how the connectivity structure in the input interacts with the connectivity structure of the network to uh, modulate the correlation transfer through the network. So once I have run my simulations with NEST, I use Python to, to analyze the data. And here we can see that for different networks with different structure represented by these uh, two parameters, the gain in correlations is different. We, from the very beginning, recruited students to actively contribute to the project. So the focus was for, all, for us always on not so much the number of people that use NEST, but the number of people that develop NEST. Over the years, the number of code lines and programmers has grown continuously. Taking care of the software's infrastructure, therefore, gains in importance.
Yuri Zaitsev dealt with this problem, winning a prestigious Google Summer of Code stipend for his work. I focused on improving the ways how Nest source code is developed uh, rather than uh, contributing new features to the simulator. So I have created a continuous integration system for Nest project. Basically, it's a system that detects changes in the Nest source code and everyone, one, uh, every time one is committed, uh, it downloads it, uh, builds Nest and runs it uh, under different conditions tests everything and whenever something goes wrong the developers are notified within minutes by email and can react to the problem quickly. If anybody has a problem with Nest or doesn't, does not know how to use it, I, I would um, urge them to, to contact us. Not, not just to um, try to solve the, the problem on your own or just uh, go away frustrated, but just um, write an email on the Nest user list or contact us personally by email. This, this greatly contributes to the quality of the code. Since 1994, many individuals and institutions have contributed to the success of Nest, as this visualization of work on the codebase shows. The initiative would not exist today if it hadn't been for the support of the following institutions.